William Rodriguez on September 11, 2001 quickly transitioned himself from being a normal janitor to a true selfless hero that decided to stay in the buildings and open up doors that he only had the key to to let firefighters and people escape the Twin Towers. He saved countless numbers of lives and barely escaped himself being the last person out of the Twin Towers running towards a fire truck that saved his life. In the beginning, everyone was captivated by his story. Politicians cowered around him. They tried to bribe him and make him promises of political power if he would just shut up about the explosions Willie heard and experienced in the basements of the Twin Towers that disputed the official story. Of course, Willie, the true person that he is, said hell no, and he was ostracized, banished, and even arrested by the establishment. Now, no one knows about him in the United States, but everyone internationally knows who William Rodriguez is. Here is Willie. Willie, how are you and what are you up to? Oh my God, I'm surprised that you showed up to this event. Um, I'm here in Miami, I'm talking about uh, security issues with the biggest association of uh, security experts in Latin America. Uh, you have seen people from the military here, people from uh, governments and uh, from 18 different countries in Latin America. And uh, I was the keynote speaker. Um, it has been an honor, a privilege to be able to bring the message of uh, my story, what happened on 9-11. And it's incredible the reception that I get. I am very surprised uh, because all the attention and the love that I receive and that, you know, almost 15 years after 9-11, we're still getting uh, um, the uh, respect uh, as victim survivors and pe people affected by the event as we did on, in the beginning. But, uh, you know, in, in a way, uh, and you've seen it uh, you know, but yourself, it, we get more attention and more respect from all these experts from all over the world than we get from America itself. Mm -hmm. Because uh, right now we're still fighting for uh, uh, an extension of the Sadroga bill. As you can see that we're fighting in, uh, for the legislation to be expanded. Uh, and it's like, you know, people don't understand. When I go to all these countries to talk about it, they don't get it. They say, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that after the event, the, we're not taking care of those heroes? You know, we're not doing the right thing. I mean, we're doing the right thing, but, you know, we got to continue fighting to remind them, I am talking about the United States, you know, the sacrifice that these people did for us. Now, I spent some time with Willie recently, even down in Mexico, and the reception William gets in Mexico, it's like Ricky Iglesias has just come out with his new album. I mean, it is just fascinating. I mean, people mob you. People on the streets recognize you all the time. And, and you know, it's not only in Mexico, but, you know, everywhere around the world, you're recognized as this huge motivational speaker that not only, you know, is really just a true hero, but, but just giving people that right energy to overcome a lot of adversities. But in the United States, there's a different kind of reception. Why do you think, why do you think that's the case? Well, remember that uh, uh, I told a lot of stories about what happened on 9-11 that made a lot of people nervous about, you know, my experience. Uh, and then you got a lot of crazy people that came out with uh, a, a, a extreme theories that I attacked. So I started getting uh, um, kind of uh, attacks uh, from, from different diverse groups. And uh, But I didn't care because I was telling my part of the story, what I experienced on 9-11. And uh, if people felt uncomfortable, I'm sorry. And if people got the wrong impression, I'm so sorry as well. But, uh, you know, it, it goes with the territory. Uh, my community from the very beginning, as you have seen the situation with Trump attacking the Latino, uh, the Mexican people uh, per se, uh, is the wrong branding that he can do with the Trump name. In my case, I have been able to take my experience of 9-11 and bring it to the people that were Latinos and they understand, you know, my sacrifice for them, the sacrifice that I did for the undocumented people of 9-11. So somehow that has basically transported me and my story to bigger audiences and to bigger receptions than, as you said, what I get in the United States. Yeah. It's amazing. 15 years and the story never changed. It's the same fascinating, very important story that everyone needs to understand. Now, even the media, you're doing so many interviews down in Mexico. 
we're here in Miami and there's no media attention. Um, what do you attribute this? Is it this kind of same kind of, uh, kind of thing or, or what's happening here? Well, what I do as well, uh, I choose the media that I give interviews. Uh, I did get contacted by CNN and by the New York Her uh, New, uh, Miami Herald, and I choose not to do the interviews after all because number one, I'm here for three days only. Uh, number two, because it's an event that is a security event. It's experts in the security industry, so it should be uh, viewed as, as as that, you know, and. Uh, so I, you know, I get to choose what kind of interviews I do from now on. After I doing thousands upon thousands of interviews all over the world, you know, and now I get to the point that I can say, well, I can say no to this one, I can say no to this other one, uh, which I didn't do before. Honestly, I, I used to speak to everyone and everybody uh, to the point that I said, well, I have to be more choose, uh, choosy when it comes to uh, the people that I want to do the outreach. And, you know, basically after uh, almost 15 years, uh, uh, the story is going to be there, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm living history, whether I like it or not, and I have to carry on with the mission, and that's what I'm doing, a mission. Yep. Now, after 9-11, there was kind of this huge re reception that you got, obviously, for your true, just heroic actions, and a lot of the politicians, whether it was Bush or Hillary, just like, came running towards you. They kind of, I, I, I kind of see it as they saw you as someone that they could kind of take a photo op with. Um, and then you kind of see them totally back off when you keep telling the same story and over and over again. Was there ever any pressure uh, from them to say, don't, don't say about this specific aspect, don't talk about what happened here? Was there ever any ever pressure that came down on you from kind of the higher ups? Uh, it always did. And as a matter of fact, uh, you were a, a, a special witness I, when I was on the no-fly list for a while, uh, which didn't make sense because a person that was named national hero uh, at the same time to be on the no-fly list didn't make any sense. And uh, even though I never call myself a, a hero, I'm just a survivor. Uh, I made a lot of people uncomfortable when I started fighting for the formal investigation, the famous 9-11 commission that uh, interviewed a lot of people. I was just an extra one of the people that they interview but everybody knew by then my story and what I was saying and if you see my testimony is still considered secret on the National Archives which is funny because it's the same story that I've been telling from the very beginning um, when I started talking about what happened that I heard explosions in the building and again I want to clarify something it could have been anything you know people have taken my story and say that there were bombs planted in the building I never said that and and, and I don't know that you know, I'm not an expert, and I was never an expert, and it could have been a fax machine blowing up. The thing is that, you know, it wasn't investigated, even though the 9-11 Commission wasn't in the task on investigating those things, as I understand now. So my views have changed uh, through the years, and I do believe that, uh, you know, uh, after being kind of uh, dated by, by the top politicians, they were uncomfortable with some of the things that I said on uh, about 9/11. Yeah, and, and obviously, I, and the work that I did for the for the undocumented, you know, yeah. the, the 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 work that I did for the immigrants, which was a very very uh, uh, affected community at the time. And um, but I'm glad that I was able to sacrifice what I was doing in terms of recognition to help those uh, community. Yeah. And up to now, it has paid off. And now when it comes to the, again, the situation with Trump, you know, when he came out to do all these uh, uh, racist uh, things about the immigrants, I was uh, basically uh, um, brought up o o over international uh, affairs again uh, because I attacked Trump. Yeah. Now, it's, it's just amazing. Internationally, you're a motivational superstar. In the U.S., you get put on the no-fly list and you also were arrested and you faced a bunch of horrendous uh, atrocities and a, a bunch of horrendous adversities just for telling the same story over and over again that has never changed which just and, and it's been verified by so many other people who are also with you on that you know fateful day can you just tell us about you know some of the adversities that you faced just you know being honest being the true person that you are well as you know i was uh, arrested uh, at the 10 year anniversary uh, on, in, in New York. I was invited to do an interview for um, Voice of America, which is uh, um, the government official uh, radio. And uh, once I got to the, 
federal building in New York, I was arrested for going to do an interview. And I was held uh, for three days, no charges. And luckily, I knew the law and I, I had the help of uh, one of the biggest uh, um, civil rights lawyer in New York. When I contacted him from jail or from detention, uh, he was very surprised and uh, there was no charges. I was detained and uh, they were going to invent a couple of charges that never sticked on and um, you know I, I, I got out I got out because they got no legal resource and I believe it was because you know it was the day that uh, uh, and my speculation again that uh, Obama was coming for to ground zero and I had a lot of followers uh, with me on 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 the 9-11 anniversary so I guess they felt very uncomfortable about that uh, that's one of the things uh, I, I was on the no-flight list for a long time but then I was taken out I <laughs> I don't know how I guess the the media attention and uh, and like you said you know I'm just a motivational speaker that, is, that I speak to people on how to face adversity how to uh, uh, do great things in moments of despair how to take negatives in, and turn it into positives and on top of that how to become an activist and that's what we all do that's you know what you do in your own way that's what I do in my own way and we're trying to change people hearts and visions about you know our experiences and that's yep. all yep and internationally you also spend a lot of time with a lot of world leaders you've been all over the world speaking the same story motivating people everywhere what if is, is there one moment that kind of sticks out to you I know it's hard because you've been everywhere but is there one moment somewhere in the world that you've been at that finally brought just a little bit of closure to you knowing that you're doing the right thing like one moment that just solidifies everything uh, one of the when I went to Malaysia and I met Tuma Hadir Mohammed, the former Prime Minister of Malaysia. When he heard my story, he said, wow, you know, what you went through is uh, so amazing. And, uh, you know, we wanted to investigate a little bit about what happened on 9-11. And he invited me to the palace. And, he went, and I went to Putrajaya, which is where he has his own palace. And I was surprised by the treatment that I received from him. And nothing political. But it was all about uh, empathy. What a lot of leaders forgot to do with the victims of 9-11 was that empathy and I did receive that empathy from the former Prime Minister and uh, another thing that stick out with a world leader will be when I went to Venezuela when I went to Venezuela and I was doing speeches over there and I was brought to the National Assembly and the guy that basically gave me a tour uh, took a spade uh, from uh, a sword from Simon Bolivar and, and took a picture with me and whatever I said, who's this guy? I said, ah, the, he's Nicolas Maduro. Little did I know that that guy was going to become uh, uh, the president of uh, Venezuela after Chavez. So, you know, I met a lot of uh, uh, crazy situations yeah. that I never knew that this was going to happen. And uh, I opened the museum last year, May last year, and I opened it with uh, Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. So, you know, it's just experiences after experiences. So it's just, you know, I, I wonder why still 15 years after, I still meeting with all these top leaders, uh, but they, they, it's a hunger. It's a hunger to get information about their, the side of the story of the victims and survivors that they haven't heard from experts or uh, politicians or government officials. They want to know from the survivors uh, their experience about that event. Yeah. The most important event in the next hundred years, if not the next century, that will affect us for our existence. And it's, it's the most important one. Well, you see the importance, and, and you see, well, you, you have covered a couple of my security events. 9-11 uh, changed the world of security. We know that after 9-11, uh, governments, the government have uh, spent over a trillion dollar, I believe, in security since the event. Uh, it changed everything about security worldwide. Yep. So there's, that's why I am able to bring this information to all these experts because they want to hear. Yep. So and I got certifications. That's a good part. When I go to this event, I get per uh, certification from the special uh, trainings that they do, and I have a bunch already. So it gives me kind of the brand of recognition uh, as an expert that I didn't have before. So what's next? How can people not only find out more about you, but how can people help you? Well, 
Uh, simply, I will continue doing this as a mission. I'm uh, going uh, all over the world, uh, still now representing the victims. I actually run the 9-11 survivors page. Uh, it's a not secret. It's a closed group on, on only for 9-11 survivors on, on the internet, on Facebook. Uh, it's still giving uh, services to uh, those that need 9-11 uh, services. And basically what you can do to help is just continue telling the story. That's all. I don't need the nations. I don't need uh, monetary help. Uh, but I do believe that, you know, if you can sur survive an event like 9-11, you can survive worse things after that when it comes to the attacks that you receive, what I've been doing. No? Yep. And uh, uh, what I will ask is that, you know, share the videos, share the information, and then help those people that are doing the sacrifice for you. An example, you know, you have the Mr. Luke here that is all over the world, you know, covering a news item that nobody else is covering. Well, give him the help because he's the one putting his skin out there. I basically, you know, survive doing uh, conferences, uh, uh, motivational conferences, but he's out there. He needs to do this all the time. Yeah. So basically it's just to support us in any way you can. In my case, share the information, share the videos, in Lucas' uh, 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 position, help him with donations so he, co so he can continue uh, traveling the world. And if you want to hear an amazing story, if you want to have, I think, seriously, one of the best motivational speakers out there, get in contact with William Rodriguez, a true unsung hero that's done amazing, beautiful, humbling work. He's known internationally, but he should be known nationally. Spread the word. Was, was building seven because it never really got any intention um, and it was really just like a question like I said in the song it's like yo did they really pull it because all you watch you watch like certain documentaries and you watch counter documentaries and you watch declassify these 28 pages yeah. they can call their member of Congress and ask their member of Congress to join in the house effort and it's H resolution 14 and